Hey guys, it's the Queen of Lions here, my pretties, and today, in Shadows of Prey's episode 159, I thought I'd go ahead and do a review on a different movie, and this one is a, um, is a DreamWorks movie that I have not done in, like, well, I have not done at all, but I've also never have done a, well, a, um, review on this, you know, well, yet. And this movie we're going to do a review on today will be called The Prince of Egypt. Now, this movie came out in 1998. It was produced by DreamWorks Animation Studios and DreamWorks Pictures had released by. It is the first feature film from DreamWorks to be traditionally animated. It's an adaption of the Book of Exodus. And follows the life of Moses while being the prince of Egypt. And his ultimate destiny is to lead the Jews out of Egypt. So, I have not watched this movie in like a really, 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 really long time. I watched it when I was a kid and it has been years since I've seen it. So, I watched it for the first time in a while. So, now I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, do a review on this um movie. So, now... This was a film um, of that it was originally while te the Ten Comrades, while working for the Walt Disney Company, they put an idea of after co-funding DreamWorks Pictures in 1994. So, the film was theoretically released to the public in December 18th, 1998 on the home video on September 14th of 1999. So anyways, um, this there is a Broadway musical um, adip, ad, um, adaptation of the movie. There's also a prequel of Prince of Egypt called Joseph the King of Dreams, which it basically is the a prequel to the Prince of Egypt movie, which I have not seen it yet. So, anyways, I guess, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, explain what the plot is on the movie in case if you guys have not, um, well, haven't really watched this movie in a while or if you have not seen it, let's get started. So this takes place in ancient Egypt, which is the enslaved Hebrew people who pray to God for deliverance. Pharaoh's city who is a fe fearing that the growing numbers of Hebrew slaves could lead to a rebellion, orders a mass in infanticide of all newborn Hebrew boys, fearing for their newborn son's safety, the Yarvarchif and her other two children, Maram and Aaron, or Aaron, rush to the Nile River while she places the infant on a basket on the water, after bidding him farewell with the final lullaby. Moranum follows the basket as it sails to the pharaoh's palace and witnesses her baby brother safely being adopted by Seti's wife, Queen Goyua. Goyua? So I do apologize if I don't say these names correctly because I have not seen Prince of Egypt in years, which they named the boy Moses. Before leaving Moran prays that Moses will come back to them and set their people free someday in the future. Years later, Moses and his adoptive brother Ramses, he's Ramses, heir to the throne of Egypt, are scolded by Seti for accidentally destroying the temple during a chariot race. After Moses suggests that Ramses be given the opportunity to prove his responsibility, Seti names Ramses Prince e Regent and gives him the authority over Egypt's temples. As a tribute, High Priest Hotep and Hu, Hu offers Ramses a beautiful but rebellious young Midline and woman, Trip Tezeparafra, Ramses and uninterested and in her stubbornness, gives Tezepara to Moses instead and appoints him in the royal chief archiate. So during the banquet, Moses humiliates 
to Zipporah by letting her fall to the pond after she refuses to submit. Now, appealing and pleasing to the crowd, but disappointing to her, later that night Moses follows Zipporah uh, to as she escapes from the palace and runs into the now adult Merim and Aaron, whom he does not recognize. He then refuses to believe that their claims and upteps to them having arrested until Merim sings their mother's lullaby. Triggers Moses' memory, he flees in denial, but learns the truth of Seti's genocide from a nightmare. Then Seti himself, who disturbs Moses by claiming that the Hebrews were only slaves, the next day, Moses tries to stop the Egyptian slave driver from flogging an, an elderly Hebrew slave, accidentally pushing the guard to his death. Horrified and ashamed, Moses flees to the desert in exile, despite Ramses' pleas that he stay. Arriving at the oasis, Moses defends the three young girls from the Bridget Gans, and, and to only find out that their older sister is... To Sephora. Moses is welcomed then by Jethro, who is to Sephora's father and the high priest of Median. Over time, Moses becomes a shepherd, falls in love with to Sephora, and marries her, and then grows just into life as a Median. One day, though, while chasing a stray lamb, Moses discovers a burning bush through a god which God tells him to return to Egypt and guide the Hebrews to freedom. God bestows Moses' shepherding staff with his power and promises that he will tell Moses what to say. When Moses tells Zipporah of his task, he decides to join him. She decides to join him at this time. When they arrive at Egypt, Moses is happily greeted by Ramses, who is now Pharaoh with a wife and son. Moses requests the Hebrews' release, and transforms his staff into a snake to demonstrate God's power. Hotep and Hu despicably recreate his transformation, only to have their snakes eaten by Moses's. Not wanting to have their actions caused by the Empire's collapse, and feeling betrayed by Moses' motivations for his return, Ramsen stumbles the Hebrews' workload. So the Hebrews, including Aaron, blames Moses for their increased workload, Disheartening Moses, however, Merim in inspires yours Moses to preserve. Moses casts the first of the ten and plagues of Egypt, turning the water of Nile into blood. But Ramses then remains unmoved. Moses inflects eight more plagues into Egypt, but Ramses still re refuses to elect it, vowing to never release the Hebrews even after banishing Hotep and Hu from the palace from their deceptions. Disheartened, Moses prepares for the Hebrews for the 10th plague, instructing them to surface a lamb and, and sacrifice a lamb and mark their doorposts with its blood. So that night, the final plague kills the first, all firstborn children of Egypt, including the Ramses' son, while sparing those who were Hebrews grief Eve stricken Ramses gives the Hebrews permission to leave. After leaving the palace, Moses collapses in grief and that the pain he's caused for his brother in Egypt. The following morning, Moses, Maram, Aaron, and Tesepara uh, lead the Hebrews out of Egypt at the Red Sea. But as the Hebrews discovered that it was a vengeful, Ramses is pursuing them with his army, intent on killing them. However, a pillar of fire blocks the army's way while Moses uses a staff to part the sea. The Hebrews cross the open sea at the bottom and the fire vanishes and the army gives chase, but the sea closes and drowns the Egyptian soldiers, sparing Ramses alone. Moses sadly bids his brother farewell and leads the Hebrews to Mount Sinai, where he receives the ten comrades, and thus the movie ends. Now, I'm going to have to say this story definitely was like an emotional roller coaster. Like, it just went from one to a hundred. Now, this is the first film independently outside of Disney and Pixar films that it was became a really good movie. Like, I'm surprised because some people thought that this was 
it's a Disney, non-Disney movie, but for some reason, a lot of people always thought that this one could have um, been like a Disney movie. Like, I mean, I haven't seen this movie in years, and this movie, honestly, Lee, is pretty good, actually. I, I do think that the acting did really good. I love the acting of this movie, as well as the good animation, the good concept of how the movie went out. Although I'm going to have to say I have not seen this movie in like ages. So like I mean it's been years since I've last sat there and did this movie. But seeing that there's a Broadway well musical based on this. That's just really amazing. It amazes me that there is um a Broadway or musical based on this movie. And it I honestly do have this movie and I haven't watched it in years. So I would have to say it's a good movie, but it's also, it's, dis it's disturbing at times, but I still found it to be really good. Like, most of the Egypt, um, Egyptian characters in this movie are basically, you know, um, based on, you know, based on, you know, all these characters are based on, you know, real life history people, people and that, which I mean, it was pretty interesting for how it went out as well as, you know, taking the history of Egypt. So, Jeffrey Katzenberg, her former Disney chairman, had always wanted to do an animated adaptation of The Tam Comrades while working on for the Walt Disney Company, but suggested this idea to Michael Inster, but he refused. The idea for the film was brought back in the formation of DreamWorks Pictures sometime in 1994, when Katzenberg's partners founded founder Steven Spellenberg and the music producer David Griffin while meeting with the Spellenberg's living room. So, The Prince of Egypt was written throughout the story's process, beginning with the out starting outline story supervises Kelly Lee Asbury and Lorna Cook led a team of 14 storyboard artists and writers as a sketch out for the entire film. So they surprisingly that this movie was honestly in production sometime in the early 90s, as well as, you know, the development. They even, you know, did some animation design for it about how they should have, you know, a certain um scene go. And creating the gods with voice was given to Lon Bender and the team working for the film's composer, Sir Hans Zimmer. But the challenge with that voice was to try to evolve into something that has never been done before. I think that was one of the challenges. The music of this um, movie was absolutely fantastic and amazing, especially with the whole um, concept of how the movie went out, as well as the good... Um, the, I really do like how, you know, that it honestly has a really great um concept of Prince of Egypt, especially with the soundtrack of it. It's just flat out amazing. Of course, Prince of Egypt had its premiere at the Royce Hall on December 16th, 1998. It was wide release occurring two days later. Now, of course, it, warmed, it wound up getting the second to theatrical release as the movie Ants, was rushed to reach feeders in in October. So, with that being said, Ed, this movie honestly has a pretty good, um, really good, um, reputation for how well that this was made. Like, I really like that this was taking place, you know, in Egypt, and, you know, taking the history of Egypt together and, you know, putting it in this movie to make it, you know well-made in detail for how well they wanted to do this. Like, I really do think the characters did pretty good. I do like how well-made the movie went went as well. I do think that this movie honestly plays a good part of the story. So, anyways, I guess um, with that being said, this one was released on DVD and VHS as well as the Blu-ray, and a lot of people really do find that, you know, they really enjoyed how well made this movie was, and, I mean, it was a really good movie. 
However, though, there are some controversies and censorship that happened in about this. Now, basically, the Prince of Egypt movie was banned in the Maldives, Malaysia, and Egypt, all as well as all Islam states. It's all Islam, well, countries, on the grounds of Islamic prophets, who include Moses, who are not very visually de depicted, but the film was banned and also in Indonesia, but was released on a video CD format. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs and the Maldives stated, all prophets and messengers of God res are revered in Islam and therefore cannot be portrayed. Following its ruling, censor, the censor board banned the film of January of 1999. In the same month that the film censorship board of Malaysia banned the film, as to not offend the country's majority of Muslim population, the board of secretary then said that censor board the rule of the film was insensitive for religious and moral reasons. I mean, I had a feeling that there was going to be like some controversy with this movie because you know it took place, you know. Because, you know, there's some... I mean, I don't understand why they banned it to begin with. Because stupid censorship nowadays is just a freaking joke. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm sure you can all agree with me that censorship is just a complete joke nowadays. I mean, I don't understand why they did it. But at the same time, I mean, they had a good reason to, you know, ban this movie at certain, you know, countries back then. I don't even know if any... If anything, you know, it's just... I don't know, it's just, I think it's just kind of dumb that they censored the whole thing. But yet again, I really don't know, because with all due honesty, it's just crazy. And it's something I can definitely state now that, you know, I really was not sure why they would censor it, but, you know, I guess they just um had a good reason to censor this in certain countries. So, I think they're just acting ass hurt. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be nitpicking here, but that's just um how I feel personally. But yet again, you guys might have your own suggestions and thoughts on why that's the case. Now, of course, there is a prequel to this movie that came out in 2000, as well as a stage musical of the story that follows the same thing. So... I mean, in my honest opinion, I haven't watched this movie in a long time. I think because the last time I watched it was like a couple of years ago and I was a kid with the time when this came out. So, yeah, that was honestly why I have not seen this movie in like a really long time. But I guess with that being said, what did you, I mean, like I'm going to say, this is just my own opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me. That's fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these movies. This is just only my personal thoughts. You're free to state your own opinion in the comments below, because I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on this movie. As I'm going to say right now, uh, what did you guys think about this movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what you have done for us to help make this movie a lot better? Feel free to leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, and if you're new to this channel... Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace out, everyone. And as always, I'll see you all next time.